At the heart of Scotland's largest city sits our busiest railway station. Glasgow Central is the hub that connects millions of people in communities all over the country. For station staff, keeping Central's passengers moving is the constant mission. It's a scary thought to think you're managing something as big as this. And with over 100,000 visitors a day, no two shifts are ever the same. Yeah, yeah, you've got to muck in. Everybody's got to muck in. I can see if anybody from the head office is coming in to catch me out. That's always good. Right, I'd be lost without the railway in Glasgow Central. This time on Inside Central Station... Drive up! Drive up! The staff must battle to keep things running like clockwork. For any Haymarket or Edinburgh passengers to use Queen Street, please. A train's developed a fault and it's blocking four lines. We still can't get the lights to work, but we've got it ticking. Are you happy enough to start? No. no. Until the platform clears, we won't be starting the dispatch. It's too busy. For more than 140 years, Glasgow Central has welcomed visitors from near and far. But to keep a station this size running smoothly takes more than 800 dedicated staff. Together, they have one shared aim, to keep everything on track and on time and ensure all their passengers reach their destinations without a hitch. With 38 million people journeying to and from the station a year, communication is key. The information booth at the top of the concourse is the first stop for many. You just don't know what the day is going to bring. You've just got to try and be prepared as best as you can. Josie deals with dozens of passengers every day. If she can guide them through the station and beyond, it helps to keep things ticking along. At the moment, we're in tourist season, so we get inundated with tourists needing information on Glasgow, Edinburgh, even sometimes we get asked about Stirling and Inverness. So we always make sure we've got a bit of everything here so that the passenger come, goes away happy. We have moved from the small booth down at the bottom next mobility point to up here, which has made it a lot easier for customers to find us. It makes it a bit easier for us being closer to the platforms. This uh, ticket here, uh, which time this go to the London? Uh, you've got seats booked here for the 10.40. 12.47 now, it's usually platform number five. Okay. I want to go down to Clyde Bank, but do I have to go to the other station? Do I have to go to... Uh... No, no, it'll be from here. Right. Yes, yeah, so we do uh, trains to Clyde Bank. Just bear with me while I get the right bits. So next one is going to be 10.55. I love my job. I think um, I'm naturally somebody that does not stop talking. So the fact that I get to, to do that and just have lovely conversations with people and you, you get to, um, to build a kind of friendship as well. So we've got a lot of people that come up to the desk like maybe once, twice a week and, you know, bring sort of a cake or bring a coffee and just to have a wee chat. No two days are the same here. We usually get a lot of people asking, you know, the, the general questions about platform numbers, what time their train is, but you do get ones that will stand and chat away for a long time. And I like hearing all the stories, all the different passengers, and it's, it's really lovely. <laughs> Josie can help point people in the right direction, but it takes highly skilled train drivers to get them there. Thousands of people apply to become trainee drivers, but only a select few have what it takes to make the cut. They then have to undergo a rigorous training program before they're licensed to take control. Aspiring driver Kevin is entering the final phases of his training. 
and is being assessed by instructor Ronnie during a 23-mile journey from Glasgow to Guruk. So just punch in the head code, every train's got its own head code. Obviously letting you know where you're going to be going. It tells you the stops as well. This is a, a system in built that will tell you your next station because that changes all the time. On a journey like this, there can be anything up to 15 stops and Kevin must pay close attention to the programmed route. So first stop, Paisley Gulch. I don't, never ever thought I would do this in all honesty, kind of grown up. So, but I always had a wee inclination that I thought it would be a good job and I knew a few people that had done it themselves. I got some info from them and it sounded quite appealing and I was quite lucky that I put in it and got it first time as well. I quite liked the idea of trying it. When I applied, I didn't know a, a hell of a lot about it, but once I started doing my, my research, I thought it was going to be quite a good job and it really appealed to me at that point, so I was quite keen to get through. And um, I'd definitely never look back, to be honest, so far so. So far so good. Uh, it's quite intense, you do different blocks, so you'll do like the rules, then you'll do the, the traction, you'll learn about the train itself, then you'll try and get the, the routes in your head. You specialise in certain topics for maybe a month or two at a time, then you move on to the next one. And it's trying to now, maybe like nine, 10, 11 months later, try and put it all together, uh, to, to bring it all together to get passed out. That's what I found is quite, quite challenging myself. To add to the pressure, Kevin's every move comes under the scrutiny of instructor Ronnie. Basically, Kev just works my shifts. We're just on normal shifts, and Kev obviously does the driving down. Uh, and he's so far forward with his training that I'm just here to make sure nothing goes wrong. Really. <laughs> I remember going in and being a bit overwhelmed with all the different buttons and switches and, you know, you don't know what anything is. It's quite overwhelming. It's a bit like a dashboard in a car, but times 10 and you've got the different screens, you've got the radios, diff two different types of phone almost and things for the PA and things like that. It's quite overwhelming. Kev's anticipating the red signal, so he's brought his train speed down when he first seen the double yellow back uh, on the lead up to Allington Mess there. He's now in through the, the single yellow, so we've got a red ahead. So Kev will now take up to 65 in the line coast. Down to provide we've got uh, green signals again down to uh, down to Paisley Gilmer Street. There's a 45 outside Paisley Gilmer Street that Kev will break for and then he'll break for the station. Passenger safety is paramount, so Kevin keeps an eagle eye on the platforms. I just want to make sure nobody's within this yellow line basically. Check the signal is uh, I proceed ahead of it, so it's a green signal, so doors are clear and close the doors on the left. So next stop, Bishop. Under Ronnie's expert guidance, Kevin progresses down the banks of the Clyde towards Guruk. So far, so good, ah, yeah, good, decent. Two or three down, four or five more to go. So, uh, no, it's great, Ronnie's been that long now that any, any wee things that I need ironed out or any wee queries that I've got, I'll just ask him and there's no kind of, there's no pressure, he'll answer the question, no bother, no make me, no make me feel kind of daft if I've got a question that I need squared away in my head. When I first joined, Ah, you're, just, you're just really nervous, you know, and you're trying to do the most. Now I can do it, can I know a lot of things, no bother, but back then it was a bit, everything was a big deal, so slowly, the more and more hours I get in, gradually I feel a little bit better the more I do it, to be honest. The sunny Guruk, where the sun always shines. <laughs> Two lights, dairy key. Fantastic, as always, Gav. Hi, neutral. Dairy. Well done, Gav. Doors. Perfect. Precise timing of arrivals and departures is essential to the smooth running of modern day Central Station. But in the early years of railway travel, keeping to time was simply a pipe dream. Prior to the Industrial Revolution in Britain, there was no regulation of time itself. If people wanted to know what the time was, they would look at the sundials in the town square 
and then after that, the advent of the town clock. But the time was not regulated. But in those days, it never mattered. The only important thing to the people that lived within these areas was the time it was set on that clock. The time in Glasgow, Manchester, London, and the other major cities were different. They were not precise. This imprecision caused a great problem for the railway companies. Trains have to depart and come in a certain time. This caused serious problems. This caused accidents because of the trains not running on time. So it became paramount that the railway companies had to standardise it. The solution to this came about in 1840. The Great Western Railway Company approached Greenwich and set the mean time through their company. This had an amazing effect, a domino effect, which meant that every other successive company through to the Caledonian Railway Company a few years later set their time by Greenwich. And to this day, we all set our clocks throughout the entire world to GMT itself. Running to that standardised time is Central's famous clock, high above the concourse. Central Station's clock has a special place in the heart of the city itself. It's more than just a timepiece. Throughout the years, having worked in here, I've seen people meet up underneath the clock, going for a night out on a Friday and Saturday night. The clock itself that we have in Central today was installed in 1992. The original clock was much more ornate, and it sat just slightly in front of where the clock is at this present day. If you were a Victorian coming in, the Gordon Street entrance to the station, you'd be confronted by this massive timepiece that sat on top of their original arrivals and departure board. The original clock took on a greater importance than today's. In this modern age, we have watches, we have mobile phones that have the time on it. But in those days, it was different. It was a different society. If you had a pocket watch, by and large, you were quite wealthy. You would come in here, you would open your pocket watch just to set your time by the Caledonian Railway Company's time. From the Industrial Revolution came Britain's railways. I don't think we realise in this day and age the different innovations that came from the rail industry. The standardising of time is an example of that. Time is so important to us, as it's always been, and it always shall remain. And my time's up, I'm going for a cup of tea. They never have the barriers. No, they didn't have the barriers years ago. No. Didn't they know? Maggie, Annie and Helen have been regular visitors to Central for almost their entire lives. We're here because we're going to Largs today for a wee day out. And we come here every week. We don't manage on a Tuesday, we'll come on a Wednesday. Wednesday. Coming through the station is friendly. We start our wee day out and we walk in here, we go for our coffee and we sit and we watch the world go by. I just love the Central Station because it's good and the people are nice. I like going to Larks and we, sometimes we go over to Millport. My memories coming here would be in the 50s with my mother and father. My mum and dad always took us to maybe Soul Coats or like, whatever press week, you know, True. and whatever they can afford. But then when I get married and I had my own kids, you're talking about in the 70s, I brought my kids, took them to saw coats and lads and all over on the train. Annie was ill a few months back, came out of hospital, she wasn't picking up at all. We were worried, the family was worried. I uh, was saying to her daughters, maybe one day take your mum to lads, would it maybe cheer her up and bring her round again? So we done that. And I, do you know, see after it, that wee day, she went, Helen, I feel good. And that was her. The next the following week, she was back to her normal self. When are we going back to Largs? When are we going back? And do you know, my sister's been great ever since. Yeah. It was a tonic. I couldn't get it out. I've had cancer and everything. And uh, they have come out and started coming here. It's just singing me right up. 
It means a lot to uh, Glasgow, the Central Station. It's just been there all our life. We're meeting place even with our boyfriends, meet at the Central Station. <laughs> I'll be back all those years. Right, Maggie? Yeah. That's you. On platform two, it's a big day for Lauren. All right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Nervous? Wait back. <laughs> She's on shift with trainer Colette. We are going to be looking at the main signal. Right. So we're just making sure that side of that amber ordering. Lauren's learning the highly precise art of train dispatch. Just double check your signal and that's it. This crucial procedure ensures that trains leave the platform both safely and on time. Just remember and give your train manager a wave as well when they're passing. Ready? The dispatch process is a conversation between members of staff using batons and whistles. So we would start if we were the lead dispatch. We would use for batten and we're whistled to ask the person, the member of staff at the top, if everything's safe, if it's clear, if it's good for us to let the train manager know it's time to close the doors. And then we will give the driver the RA, which is the right away, and that's telling the driver, platform's clear, the doors are closed, and it's safe to leave the platform. I'm the trainer for the, the new people joining us on the platform, so I'm teaching them how to dispatch trains. So over the course of three weeks, she'll learn train dispatch, how to shut trains down as well, just to make sure that everything's safe up on the platform. So you can just position yourself here, because right. you'll be able to see the, the full train, you can see the main aspect, and then we can move in a wee bit. Are you happy enough to start? No. 22 to, to version 4. All right. The bottom of the platform is still really busy just now, so we're just going to give Lauren a wee minute. OK, just need to judge it where you can see it or not. Just judge it and then dispatch when you're ready. Roger. You want to walk back, Lauren, just so you can check your doors. Walk forward again. Just tip Stephen at the top. Keep your back up. I think because it is a safety critical role, you need to make sure that everybody is off the platform, nobody's trapped in the doors. So it is important that you're just focused constantly. Satisfied that everything's safe on the platform, they can now signal the driver. Just give your driver the arrow. OK. That's it. Yeah. There's your key. Thank you. No, got it. And just watch your train till it leaves the platform. That's you. Well done. Yeah! When qualified, Lauren will keep the trains running to time. Josie's role is to help travellers get on the right one. Hi. Hello, how are you doing? I'm good, how are you? Um, we just came in from the uh, Greenwich train station. OK. And we want to make sure we know, we have a return, but we want to make sure we know how to, where to go when we come yeah, back. Yeah, sure. In a couple of hours. So I've got plenty of these made up. <laughs> she was very helpful because we needed to know if there was a difference between peak and off peak that we had on our ticket. She told us that, yes, we could use the ticket this afternoon to get back and where to go when we come in here to, so we get the right train back to Greenwich. Right. How to find the right gate. And as Americans, we could understand her very well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
I've been in the railway 15 years now. I started when I was 23. I used to work on the manual barriers that we used to have before the gates came in. Um, and in between that, you did on train as a ticket examiner. But then all you were doing was getting abuse of people, you know, who had to queue for a ticket or who wanted to buy a ticket on train. It got to a point where I had one customer that basically was shouting and swearing right in my face and um, said awful, awful things, and I, that was kind of it for me. Chelsea needed to take a few months off work after the incident. I got so much help from my, my, my bosses, my line manager. I had time off to try and find myself again, and I needed that. I really, really needed that. <laughs> On her return to work, Josie took up the role on the information desk. A perfect fit for her and the station. Turn left and then second on your right, so it's about a five minute walk from okay. here. Yeah, so, well, thank you so much for your help. You're more than welcome. Okay, have a great day. <laughs> you too. Bye. Well, we're now at the 15 minute countdown to the end of the shift. So usually this time we start to sort of pack things up that are kind of in the way so that when we start in the morning, everything is already prepared. Right, I think that might be four o'clock. Button of joy. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Scott L, three to base. Sorry, Jen, I know you've got enough on your plate just now, but any chance of we quick announcement now and then uh, for any Haymarket or Edinburgh passengers to use Queen Street, please? In a place this busy, sometimes there's the occasional problem. Today, Derek has to deal with the knock-on effects of a broken-down train. There's coaches uh, came apart outside Pomodi uh, Depot. So what needs to happen now is we need to get reattached. And until that's done, we've got a delay, but that affects the main line, affecting Lanark services and Edinburgh services. I could walk in and something could go really bad today, and I'll be quite happy to work my day. It doesn't matter to me if there's disruption, which we hope we don't get. Obviously, it doesn't suit the passenger, it doesn't suit the staff. It's up to staff in the communications room to keep Derek and the passengers up to date with information about the broken down train. Basically, a train has had developed a fault and it's split, so the wagons came apart from the coaches and it's blocking four lines coming up towards Pulmody, so that's blocking all the Willowland lines. So all the Edinburghs are currently cancelled and the same with the Virgin trains, they're all cancelled or delayed as well because of it. So, yeah, it's caused a bit of inconvenience. At least it's not happened during, like, major evening peak, um, so don't have the same amount of passengers in, but it could carry on to peak tonight, so we'll see how it goes. Hopefully it get fixed strongly. For the voice of the station, so to let passengers know what's happening, we need to then let them know. We need to let the staff know so they can pass on information to the passengers. So, yeah, it's quite an important job to make things go quite smoothly in the station. Scott L3 to Scott L6 and all Gateline staff. Just a wee update what's happening in the Lanark line. Uh, we still have obviously the, the, the immediate effect of the broken down train at Pomod. I've just asked control any likelihood of our Edinburgh service running anytime soon. Unfortunately, it's bad news. We're not going to be in the movement just now because the set hasn't been attempted to be moved yet. So once we have more information, I'll get back to you. Whilst Derek keeps the staff informed, Jennifer updates the waiting crowd. Until further notice, we have nothing moving gear shots at the moment. So I could be here anything. No, you could, what you're best doing is going up to Edinburgh for you. For Queen Street. Like West Calder, right? Sorry, mate, so but you're not, I'm not guaranteed a train out to Edinburgh to West Calder. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the trains are, stuck, the trains are stuck there. So they're going to just shut them back and forward. Which is my second issue. Yeah, you tell me, I could wait till It's happened uh, literally five minutes ago. Uh, but my mates, my mates were really there away up to Queen Street. I've just now. found out, literally came in five minutes. See if I knew earlier? You'd have knew earlier. Sorry. I'm going to have an optimistic head on the day and say that I think this could be a fix that will be shorter than later. I'm hoping that if it gets this into peak time, then we'll get a bit of major trouble. But listen, we're here to resolve. Not to worry about these things, you know. But if passengers are to get on their way, the team need to find alternative routes for some of the trains. There's an Edinburgh train that goes via Motherwell, so we need to make sure that the driver and crew know the route 
to go if it can go that way, basically. Um, if it can't go that way, they'll need to cancel it. Derek needs to alert the driver of the Edinburgh bound train about a possible change of route. Right, buddy. Hang on a sec. Right, control wire, talk to you. Hello. Then the driver of the train receives news that he can continue on his planned route. As booked. Mac, I think this is going to go as booked. Come on, the driver's saying it's going as booked, is that correct? No one's told me. Score L3 to base, Jennifer. 47 Edinburgh reinstated as booked. The man said it clearly fault. So 47 is reinstated, so we'll get out of the Thank you. Scott L3, all dispatch staff, you get that? We have cleared, rectified the problem. Uh, Paul McDee, we should be going back to book the run-ins, but obviously consequential and delays and cancellations are still subject to performance of this. The track being reopened means good news for the passengers, but the staff are still up against it. The line's opened again, so the broken down train has been moved, so that's now a way to the depot to be looked at. So we've still got a few delays and cancellations coming in and going out, but it's better than it was and it's just in time for peak time, so hopefully, hopefully things continue to just get better now. So suddenly the shops have started at 15.05 today in the Alara from Shots Line. Yeah, it's now half past four. The show have worked really wonders, to be honest with you, to get the sets back in place quickly and you know, get the passes home during the peak time. I never imagined myself outside the railway not doing anything. I couldn't do that. So the passion's in your, it's just in your heart, it's in your body, it's in your soul. And if you get the right encouragement, then you have the same passion. With all the trains running like clockwork again, Central can carry on through rush hour and into another night. A highlight of the concourse, the station piano provides the soundtrack as another day begins at Central. Seven-year-old Nathan is charming the crowds. As the rhythm of the station carries on, trainee train driver Kevin has his own performance to perfect under the watchful eye of examiner Steph. Got all your stuff for you, Kevin. Yes, you're back. Everything, yeah. The manuals and everything. After almost a year in training, Kevin still has a few final hurdles to overcome before he's fully qualified. Now all that training all comes down to this last wee bit. I guess, I know, yeah. I know, I know. Some of it's quite intense, huh? Yeah, definitely, yeah. Kevin's first test is to prove he knows all the necessary safety checks in the cab before the train can move off. Then he and Steph head into the carriage to secure the train. So I've just locked everything out, make sure nobody's on the train, basically check the toilets, make sure nobody's left on it so they don't go to the depots. Make sure all the doors are closed there. Yep, yep, yep. no Good. problem at all. Kevin was checking that um, there's no passengers on the train, all the doors are locked and secured, and uh, the, the train was fit for getting into service. Now he's just setting up the computer there, and that'll give him all the relevant information that he needs before he can proceed. With all the safety checks in the cab completed, 
they head off to the Shields maintenance depot for the next stage of Kevin's assessment. Here, he will be quizzed on all aspects of the operation of the 380 train. I don't know what I'd do, to be honest, if I never get through. Um, hence why I'm just trying to throw everything at it at the moment in time and just make sure I get past the kind of finishing line, you know. Kevin's first task here is to demonstrate he can safely join two sets together. Close that screen was down, I'm sure. Oh, it was down. Are you quite happy with that then? Yeah. Are you secure and locked? Yes, I. The passengers yeah. can go from one yeah. to the other. The doors are eliminated there okay. on the other side, right. so they can go through and that's The screen's yeah. dropped. Good. Yeah. Next comes a gruelling test of Kevin's technical knowledge of the train, and there's been a lot to learn. So when would you isolate a set of doors? Uh, if there was issues with them closing, for example, or if you wanted to maybe lock off a coach if somebody had been, if yeah. there was something spilled, yeah. something sick, something had sick a, and so accident. on. What's this panel here? Your got panel. How do you lock it off? Just, just sorry, that's what I was doing earlier on there. I'm just confusing myself with that. So it will be in your ADD, it will work in conjunction with that and keep it down. We're getting there, we're getting there, it's all rolling out now. <laughs> this is just one train. <laughs> got another three or four as well. Not too far to do another this when you've got 100 folk watching in the camp the coach as well. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, cheers. Yeah, I'll let you lock the cupboards. <laughs> the pressure already seems to be getting to Kevin. And back on the tracks, Steph is pushing him even further. Inside and out, he needs to prove his knowledge of every part of the train. So what's this? Your damper. And this? It's a suspension, essentially it's going to... Your suspension... So what's, speed, what's the maximum speed this train can do? 90. So that's... No, oh, can do 100, so that's going to do 100. We and on our lines is 90. And that will help with the, the suspension. That's yeah, the good stuff. So what type of brake would you be isolating if you isolated that brake yeah. isolating cock? Pneumatic brake. No. Friction brake. Yep. Sorry, friction brake for that one. Where's the pneumatic brake? Where is it isolated? HMI. Sorry. Aye, good stuff. yes. Quite keen to get passed out after all the work. It'd be full on to do a year and then why do a full year and then not enjoy it? You know, so I need to get out there and get it done. What does Patosso W stand for? Pantograph trailer open lavatory. Pantograph open lavatory standard wheelchair. Back at Central Station, Lauren's also coming towards the end of her demanding dispatch training. Coach B, so the second one along. Before taking the final test that proves she's got what it takes as a dispatcher, Lauren has one last shift under Colette's expert guidance. She's made it fun. I've enjoyed myself. It's been quite daunting, but I feel a bit relaxed now, considering the first day I was so nervous. You're going to smash your rules, so you better phone me or text me when you do it. If I don't cry in the middle, because I'm getting them all wrong. <laughs> but you just need to be confident because you know it. You know, know what you're doing. I'm just going to write it in my hand and just... I'm kidding. Kate. I'm kidding. <laughs> Thank you. You're very welcome. It's been a good support. Good. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and remember, text or phone me when you come okay. out, right? Mm -hmm. You if can do cried. it. <laughs> See? Oh, I don't care. Right, my bubble. <laughs> right, cut. <laughs> Well-trained staff and good communications are essential to keep trains moving in and out of Central. And nearly 100 years ago, the hotel that sits under the station canopy was itself the setting for a giant leap in communication technology. We're in the lobby of the Grand Central Hotel in Glasgow. And in 1927, something really special happened here. It was the first long distance transmission of television. And there's a plaque in the lobby to commemorate that occasion. And the name at the top of the plaque is John Logie Baird. In tribute to the momentous event, the hotel has named a suite in honor of the famed inventor. There's pictures of John Logie Baird on the wall here, um, which are rather nice that show you him conducting some of his experiments and experimenting also with his dummy, who was called Stooky Bill. The transmission took place between London, 
where John Logie Baird's workshop was um, and it came through telephone wire to the hotel and in the room there were a number of prominent gentlemen who had come to witness this experiment. The choice of the Central Hotel as a location for the reception of Baird's images was practical on a number of levels. One was that there was a telephone line here, but also the train line was coming up from London to Glasgow and the equipment that Baird used was very cumbersome, it was heavy. So to have somewhere close by so they could just unload the equipment from the train and get into the hotel was a, a very practical solution. The process was quite simple, but it wasn't without risks. The early television transmissions required a lot of light, very harsh light. The equipment Baird used for his television experiments was very simple. It used a spinning disc, so the disc would spin round. The disc had holes in it for light to come through and the light would fall on the subject's face. And that electric pulse would travel down the line through a telephone wire and then it was received at the other end by a similar kind of apparatus, also with a spinning disc, and then the image would appear. The light was glaring and it, was, it would burn. And for that reason, using a human subject was not seen as the most desirable way to experiment time and time again. So to compensate for that, Baird created this model. He was a Scot, so he called it Stucky Bill uh, because the model was made out of plaster. And he would uh, rotate Stucky Bill's head to demonstrate movement. At the end of this, Baird himself sat in front of the apparatus, so his image was transmitted to Glasgow, and he also picked up a telephone. So you could both see Baird and someone was hearing him on the telephone as well. There was a, a short delay, but the whole point of television was that it was to be different from film. It wasn't meant to be something that was pre-recorded and then played. What people were trying to achieve was liveness. Uh, that's what they wanted to experience, was to be able to see a horse race as it was happening um, or as a celebration as it was happening. In a public poll conducted by the National Library of Scotland, Baird was named as the second most popular Scottish scientist of all time. And I think that's a tribute really to his inventiveness and his persistence. Um, and if nothing else, he brought into the public eye something that was going to soon change the world. Central Station celebrates its own history in its popular behind the scenes tours. But tour guide Jackie is also busy unearthing artefacts for a new station museum. One thing I've learned looking through all this old stuff, it is filthy. Absolutely filthy. Everybody's been really kind and helpful and really helping me. So once this museum is up and running, it's not me that's going to have done it. It's everybody in the station that's going to have done it. But there's a lot of organising still to do. So once we get through it, we can identify what the pieces are, we can say that we want to keep, that we definitely don't. We'll take all the definites. We'll probably have three piles. We'll have definites, maybes, and definitely no. <laughs> so we found this old ticket machine. So there will be model numbers and what have you on it. So maybe a wee bit of digging to see if anybody has any inklings, if there's any way that we could even date it. It would be good to date it. Jackie's discoveries, including maps, have come from decades of rich rail history. We're hoping that the museum will evoke memories in people and an interest in their own surroundings. While Jackie hunts down more exhibits for the museum, the maintenance crew, Kev, Stevie and Davy, are working on another exciting find from times past. This is the old station clocks. 10, 12 years ago, they get changed. I'll we'll try to get one working, because uh, we're going to try and put it in the museum. We've had all sorts of offers. Can they buy them off us? Can we give them? But um, no, they're not for sale. We're we'll trying to get one going, but we have not really had much success. But... I'll go and take care with my wood. You're going to make like noises in the background, Kev? Yes, I'll, I'll do background Excellent. sound. Right. You done this face, David? Aye, Kevin started up. Aye, there you go. We've been working that for about the last, last two or three days, but we still can't get the lights to work, but we've got it ticking, so 
the plot thickens. That's your supply there, that's a wee transformer. The lights itself, there isn't a supply for here. We've got the lights, we'll have to I'll put a loop in. While Kev opts to work on another project, Stevie and Davey need more than a spark of inspiration if they're to get the clocks working properly. Hey! Whoa! Got... No, nope. that's my scene. But I think we might leave that to the, the specialist. We'll, keep, we'll, we'll try it and uh, see if the lights are going, but I think there's something else. These retro clocks need an expert's attention, so it's time for the crew to clock off. As the ebb and flow of another day at Central begins, everyone at the station plays their part to keep things moving on time. The Virgin train from London has brought the Carlisle-based boss into Glasgow to check in on his staff. Hello, Bex. I'm good, thank you. How are you? I look after Edinburgh, I look after Glasgow, Carlisle and Penrith. So I look after those four stations. Um, and I could be in any one of those locations from one day to the next. Morning, everybody. How are you doing? Yeah, not bad. In Glasgow, they are very, very proud of what they do and what they deliver, and I find that it's a common theme with people in Scotland. They're very, very proud, and um, if they can do it, they will. They just want to prove that they can do it, and they're, they're a really special bunch up here. Mark's first task is a catch-up with team leader Marie about a recent staff survey. We feel that the customer care works well, the mm -hmm. team works well together. Customer satisfaction depends on keeping to schedule. So at the slightest sniff of a delay, everyone rolls up their sleeves, even the boss. This train has been swapped with the set that's coming in now so that we can get a right time departure for this two o'clock or thereabouts. Before any passengers are allowed on board, the train needs a good tidy up. We don't like queues on Central Station, so the quicker we can get this train cleaned, the quicker we can board it. Because unfortunately, if we don't, we find that everybody starts queuing across the concourse. How are you doing? Yeah, you okay? Yeah, ten minute late start. Not bad. <laughs> Hello, Mary. Hi. You okay? Yeah, yeah. You've got to muck in. Everybody's got to muck in. It's nothing that I've not done before. I used to work on the trains. I didn't take a manager's job to move away from the front line. I like the fact that I can still keep my hand in. And every day is different. Below the platforms in the maintenance workshop, Stevie has asked Frank, Central's telecoms expert, to have a look at the old station clocks. We do a lot of telecoms work for the signaling side of the railway, the operations where the trains move, uh, how they communicate, uh, we carry certain signals for the signaling systems as, as well. Stevie had asked us about the clocks and how they could get one to work, and uh, I remembered this was a master clock for the station. This master clock, I do believe, ran all of these clocks. I can't remember, there was maybe a dozen clocks this ran. Frank is a dab hand in the fiddly business of station clock repairs. So we'll put that same, and we'll see, I heard the really something clicking. So we'll see if there's anything moving. No, yeah, that one's not one to kick. I can remember cleaning these when they were up. Uh, part of our job was to clean them, just get them back in time. Uh, night shifts, I dreaded night shift doing it. Yeah. I started in 91. I never thought I'd be here that long, but uh, it's funny, they're still here. Uh, they've not found me out yet. But with the clocks even managing to confound the expert, 
It might not be long till Frank's number is up. Call it a day. We'll see what happens. But we'll try. We'll keep trying. We'll come back. We'll get it. It's, it's not, not dead yet. Ensuring station clocks are accurate is essential in a station driven by timetables. But today, trainee Lauren has more to worry about than late trains. It's the final day, exam day, so I'm going to be dispatching a train by myself for the first time, and then I'm going upstairs to do my rules. You do your rules every two years, so, yeah. What happens now will determine if Lauren has what it takes to be a dispatcher. First, Assessor Stephen needs to monitor her practical skills on the platform. Then he'll thoroughly test her technical knowledge. I'll be watching her, just make sure she does everything right, but I'll certainly be in the background. Um, I'll just observe that she's following the procedure and that she's picked it up OK. But just to add some pressure into the mix, former Prime Minister John Major is a passenger on the train. Very nervous now, thanks for that. <laughs> Very nervous. Fridays, the trains are always so busy. It's all down to me, well, partly, but, yeah, no pressure. <laughs> Safety is crucial when a train leaves the station, so Lauren has to prove she has the technical skill and knowledge to communicate properly with her colleagues on the train and platform. away safely. It's just when another train's coming in from London and obviously there's quite a lot of people on the platform, you just need to kind of judge if it's safe to dispatch, but yeah, it's good. All good. That was a hard one for your first I time. Know, I know. <laughs> that train just emptied. I know. No, you've done really well. Thank you. All good. Yes. One down, one to go. Is that no us? No. No, no. <laughs> that one yet. Okay, <laughs> that's fine. It's on to platform four to the second train for Lauren to dispatch before her final written test. It's just a mixture of questions. Um, safety related, to do with the track layout. Quite a lot of questions that you need to memorise. The phonetic alphabet, just, yeah, quite a fair bit. The run exam's OK. It takes, there's no uh, time limit, but it normally takes about two hours. There's different questions about train dispatch, emergency, out of course situations, uh, some local stuff regarding Glasgow that's different to other stations. Oh, all good. Did I pass? Both were great. Part. Aye, absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Part one done, time for part two. No, they were really good. Thanks. Good. Here we go. Ready? My Room favourite bit. <laughs> There's no putting it off. It's exam time. Are we getting it lifted? Are we staring at it? Maybe I should run up the stairs like Rocky. I'll meet you up there. No. <laughs> Woo, when did I get painted? Lovely. That's on you. Anywhere? Anywhere you like. So this is the paper. So this is what we're speaking about earlier. Go for it. This thorough examination is the final test of Lauren's knowledge and her nerves. The only comfort is she'll get the results back almost immediately. I passed. 96%. So I'm happy. Everything's went great. The first part with the, the train dispatch went great, and then the actual rules exam was, was very good as well. So she's definitely shown she's competent. So uh, it's uh, as suddenly passed as passing ready to go. There's one last job. Let trainer Colette hear the good news. Hello. Hi. How did you go? I failed. I get them all wrong. Mm -hmm. Harvey, quiet. <laughs> no, I passed. I get 96%. Oh, million, well done. Thank you. That's me. Left alone so now. Yeah. Mm -hmm.
Lauren's boss, Virgin Station Manager Mark, also has to show he's able to step up and take on any of his staff's duties, including dispatching. That means refreshing his platform skills whenever he can. I'm an extra pair of hands. Um, I know their job. Uh, not as inside and out as much as they know their job, but um, if I can be any support to the teams and help out when I can, then I will. Mark needs to prove to Assessor Stephen he can send the trains out safely too. Just stand over that side, please. But with one train emptying as another one is leaving, it's a tricky task. As part of my station manager's duties, I, I, I should know exactly what they do and how they dispatch. It's what keeps the railway safe. How is that? <laughs> Thank you. All good. All good. After confidently dispatching one train, Mark can now jump on another to head back south to Carlisle. The trains are running to time, but Jackie's off to find out if the retro clocks for the Station Museum are too. Man, great to see you. you thank doing, you. Hi, no worries, Hi, thank Jackie. Hi, nice so glad to meet you. I believe uh, you got some good news about the clocks. Yeah, we got them going. We did. Brilliant. Uh, Brilliant. So there was a bit of tobacco. We thought it was a single pulse on the clock, but it's actually an inverted pulse. So it gets a wee pulse and yeah. then it inverts it to kick it over the next side of this, the, the moment. Right. So, uh, with so does that mean they're working? Yes, they're yes. working. So the guys know there's going to be... They pick, they'll pick the best two with regards uh -huh. to the losing time of that. Uh -huh. And uh, we've got a wee wire jig just to wire them up. So, so that's it. We'll switch them on and see what happens this time. Yeah. If we can find the all the... The plan is clubs. to take them in, and put them into the museum. Uh -huh. So we're going to put two of them in the museum. So right. uh, time is such a critical part of everybody's train journey, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, so indeed. That'll be great. Easy to work at this height, but not when they're up high, but hey-ho. So, I'm not sure the seconds will start in a minute once the minute hand moves. Yeah, this is moving right, now. They're moving now. That's them on a fast-forward movement. So, that's them, they'll put them back onto normal time, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and they'll start pulsing, hopefully. OK. So, that's basically it. It's up to the installer guys. They're going to put them up. Yep. And uh, I'll, I'll do a wee diagram. The way and I'm the foreman installer person. Are you the foreman? Yeah, I'm the foreman. Right, OK. <laughs> And then Frank. Accurate. What Don't can you say? Again, you've there, there you go. Made an old woman ah, really happy. There you can say. <laughs> Today is the culmination of almost one year of train driver training for Kevin. He'll shortly step up to the footplate and find out if he's made the grade. I got a phone call yesterday just to say that it's going to happen today, so at least I had a wee bit of time to prep for it. So I was reading over some stuff last night for some of the questions they might ask, um, and I'm just glad to get it done now. Finally got it done. Good to go then, Kev. Good, yeah. good to go. Thank aye. you. Cheers. Thank you. Yep. Are you feeling a wee bit nervous? Aye, good. Aye, nervous. Aye, but I'm just glad to. Keep apprehension. Aye, aye, of course. I definitely just want to, just want to get it done now. You know, like kind of waiting for it. So I'm just trying to get it done. It's off to the head office with Assessor Steph for the final process that determines whether all Kevin's hard work has paid off. Here, this is it. The last bit. No, no going back, Kevin. <laughs> Kevin has a nerve-wracking wait as Steph and Big Boss Gary discuss the budding train driver's progress. I think they're just going over the final things with the book, make sure everything's signed off, and then hopefully get called in. Gary, yeah, this is OK. <clears throat> Hi, Kevin. Hi, sir. Please to meet you, sir. Please to meet you. Months and months of training culminates in one final interview with Gary. So what's the difference between a single unit and a multiple unit then? As in uh, for, to remind you. So also if I'm I'll basically always use if I've got six or more, I'll use my sticker. Right. If I'm not, I'll just get eight, for example, I'll always look up. So if you've, if you've not got a sticker, what does that tell you? Well, I'm in a, a, a single, so, and I'll always... Can, I'm you see, can you see there's maybe a wee flaw there? So, how you feel about your roots and traction then? Yeah, good to go, yeah, I'm happy. With so, you're happy and confident? Yes, right, definitely. 
Right, so congratulations, Kevin. You're now a Scotland driver. Much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. This is your EU license. This is your Scotland complimentary certificate of competence. Okay. So you must carry this and your EU license at all times. Okay, brilliant. Thank you. Take it forward. Well, how was that, Kevin? Very good. Yes, I'm sorry. Is that it? That's us. That's congratulations, John. Well done. Thanks very much. Thank you very much. Right, Gary. Cheers. Thanks for all your work. Right, so now you're on your own. <laughs> so, Safety net away, young man. <laughs> okay. I'm looking forward to it. Now we'll go over to Centro and uh, we'll see what work we can get you. Right, no problem at all. Driving a train by yourself. Yes, yes, no problem all at right. all. Right. <laughs> That's the licence there, it's all signed off, that's me finally got it. So, 12, 13 months worth. That's me, managed to get it finally signed off, so that's me good to go. I think it's always better once they get verified to get out and driving on the jobs as quickly as possible. Right, David. Yes. You got a new driver. Right, Kevin. Got the very thing just for you. You go down passengers. Um... As the newest qualified driver sets out on his first solo journey, all the other station staff carry on doing their very best to keep Central running like clockwork. next time on Inside Central Station. You want to guess how many pieces I've used? A hundred. A hundred? What do you think? Four thousand. Four thousand? What do you think? A thousand million, trillion, billion, thousand and twenty-four. <laughs> Just getting into the edges here, getting the, the bits of goose and dust that you can't get to. They might not say it, but I think they ought to take a bit of pride in the station. It's, it's their station. The noise you can hear is uh, our grip blasting works. Stripping back the existing phone, back to bare steel. It's a hellish job. <laughs> Somebody's going to do it. <laughs>